Hey everybody, I wanted to talk today about cabinets and countertops. Uh, I love old kitchens and we're going to get to see some cool pictures of like 1950s kitchens and appliances and stuff like that as part of this lecture. So when we talk about cabinets and countertops, um, if we think about their purpose, we're trying to provide storage, a place to perform household tasks, and mostly what we're going to be talking about is focused in like kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, utility rooms, that, that kind of thing. Most cabinets come in relatively standard dimensions and heights, and those are based off of kind of a generic average of what's a comfortable working height for people. Okay, as far as the countertop height goes. Um, as far as the dimensions of the cabinets go, those are generally built to accommodate certain kitchen appliances. Okay, and then we're going to talk about kind of the difference between like what constitutes a custom kitchen versus a, you know, a generic kind of off the shelf kitchen also. But um, real quick, I, I wanted to expand a little bit on the <clears throat> countertop heights. If you're building a custom kitchen, you can make whatever size countertop you want for, you know, whatever height you are to accommodate your height. So if you're in a family of tall people, then maybe you want your countertop height to be higher because that's going to be more comfortable for you. If you're a family of short people, make it shorter. Um, there's, you know, nothing magic about that, like, 36-inch countertop height. Um, so another thing I, I want everybody to keep in mind when we're talking about this is that these cabinets um, and associated countertops can kind of define the spaces in the house. Um, it's not all that uncommon, especially nowadays, to have kind of the open floor plan and the cabinets would sometimes be like dictating or like defining the, the divide between the kitchen and the dining room. These are generally probably the last thing to go in the house. One of the last installations to occur is the cabinets and then the countertops obviously can't go in until the cabinets are in. And so this is sometimes, as far as like the CR Carpentry house is concerned, this is sometimes one of the big holdups on completing the houses. We can't get anybody to come out and measure countertops until the cabinets are in, and then depending on how long it takes to build the countertops, that could kind of throw off the, the sequence of events. But um, generally, you want this to be one of the last things because you don't want them to get banged up. You don't want to get paint all over them and stuff like that. So th these are kind of delicate. You want to protect these from you know general construction mayhem. So kitchens as we know them today uh, are a relatively new thing. I would say it wasn't until the 1950s that we really got like the kitchen as we know it. Um, one of my favorite questions from people that don't know any better when they're looking at old houses is, um, is this the original kitchen? And like, no, absolutely not. Um, there wasn't even, it did, what they were using as a kitchen doesn't even resemble what we had today. And so just to kind of put it briefly, depending on how far back we go, um, but generally the kitchen was organized around this like central workspace. Okay. There'd be like a table. Um, maybe there was a sink. Maybe there was a place to cook, but it was organized around that like central area. Depending on what the situation was, okay, if this was a small house, maybe the kitchen was a brick hearth in the middle of the room that served as heating and food preparation, okay? Um, in a bigger house where there would be lots of servants or something, you might have something like this. Okay, this large area, this large workspace. You also had a lot of separate rooms. Like there was, 
a scullery, a room specifically devoted to washing pots and pans. There was a butler's pantry where a s small room where the food was prepared. And so there are all these individual rooms. And if you go into houses that haven't <clears throat> been remodeled and messed around with a whole lot, you can see these little rooms, these specific rooms for preparing um, food and washing dishes and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. And then unfortunately, those have, are going away. Everybody wants to have the big kitchen. But anyway, I'm getting a little off topic here. Let's get back to generally speaking, this is what a kitchen looked like 100 years ago. Okay. In the 1950s, this kind of changed and we, we kind of moved towards a place where everybody had their own house for the most part. Okay. Families, this was the first time that families were generally able to have their own house. The middle class was able to own their own house. There was a middle class. Okay. This was kind of a new thing. Kind of post-war, we just got gotten out of the Great Depression. Anyway, let me focus again here. Um, kitchens got smaller because houses got smaller because there were more houses being built to accommodate one family. Okay. Um, our attention was turned towards making kitchens as efficient as possible. Okay. So instead of this table or workspace being the central focus of the room, we had the person working in the kitchen being the central focus and they needed to be able to access all of the kitchen appliances and workspaces relatively easily. Okay. So, one other thing that I just want to say about like older kitchens, there weren't really, oops, there wasn't really a thing as built in cabinetry. Okay. There was sinks, a big sink, usually a big range. Um, and there were basically pieces of furniture. Okay. If you, if you go and look up a Hoosier, um, that was kind of the first built in kitchen cabinet. And it was also meant to be like a, utility kitchen appliance. Okay. It had like a, a sugar dispenser and a flour dispenser, flour sifter and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't until we got into like the late forties, early fifties that we actually had continuous built in cabinetry that all matched with some sort of continuous built in countertop. Okay. Before you had tables here and some sort of cabinet over here, freestanding cabinet. It was a lot of freestanding um, individual cabinets. All right. Actual construction of the cabinet. We've got a few different components. Modern cabinets that we're familiar with consist of a face frame, the carcass, doors, and maybe a set of drawers. Um, sometimes you can have a cabinet that's just a set of drawers. But I would say the most common kind of lower kitchen cabinet is a door with a drawer above it. Okay. The face frame is usually sawn lumber. Okay. Most of the time it's like sawn lumber, some sort of species of wood. And its purpose is to cover the front of the carcass, which is generally a plywood box. That's the most efficient way to, and strongest way to build these things. So that face frame covers the end grain of that plywood, helps hold that carcass together, helps prevent racking. And then it also provides a way to attach doors and drawers. Okay. And again, that carcass, it's spelled, um, spelled different ways, but the carcass is what we call that plywood box. It's usually going to be three quarter, maybe five eighths plywood. Sometimes cabinets are frameless. It's also called the European style cabinets and the doors and the drawer hardware mount directly to the carcass. And there's kind of like some specialty hardware that goes along with those. Most of the time you're going to build a separate toe kick and then you're going to build a carcass 
that sits on top of that. You want to have a toe kick, and the, what the toe kick is, it, it elevates the box a little bit, and it provides a little recessed space here. And that's a place for your feet to go so you can stand closer to these cabinets. Generally, you're gonna build the toe kick first and then put the carcass on top of that. And the reason is, it's a way to conserve plywood. So if you think about, you know, our target, ge generic target for countertop height is 36 inches. An inch and a half or so of that is going to be countertop, which gets us down to 34 and a half inches. That is not a very efficient use of plywood. Okay, 34 inches, we can only get two sides out of a sheet of plywood. So if we make that carcass 32 inches, we can get three pieces out of a sheet of plywood. Okay, 32, 64, 96. We make that carcass 32 inches and then set it on top of a two and a half inch toe kick and that gets us to our target height and it's a very conservative use of plywood. Okay, and like I said before, most of the time that carcass is going to be built out of five eighths, most mostly three quarter inch plywood, and then that face frame. Most commonly, I'm not going to say what the most common species of wood is because it varies. Whatever whatever is cool right now is going to be the species of wood that people are going to use. Um, for a while, in the late '80s and early '90s, uh, red oak was the hottest thing on the planet. And there's a lot of red oak cabinets out there. Um, it, it's a very fast growing tree and we can harvest that and process that domestically. But people, it's one of those things that people hate it right now. They can't stand the look of it. And then, you know, wait a couple years and it'll be cool again. But right now people absolutely hate red oak. Um, people are wanting like painted cabinets right now and that'll change eventually, but suffice it to say that face frame is going to be built out of some sort of solid lumber. How you create this joinery varies, but the horizontal parts of the face frame are going to be called the rails, just like everything else, and the vertical parts of that face frame assembly are going to be called the styles. If you have a cabinet where the end is exposed, okay, like the end of a cabinet run, a nice way to do it would be to build a finished end. Um, cheaper cabinets, maybe you're just gonna have the plywood be that finished end on that set of cabinets. But if you were to build a finished end, you might build like a raised panel that would kind of match the doors or something like that. All right. Custom cabinets versus pre-manufactured cabinets. So you have a couple options when you're gonna go build your kitchen. You can contract with a cabinet maker and have them build all your cabinets for you. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna be exactly what you want and it's gonna look very clean. Um, it's going to be very expensive, okay? You could go your other option is go to Home Depot or Lowe's and just buy them off the shelf and assemble them. And it's so cheap, but it's such poor quality. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about it. So if you want to get a custom kitchen, you're going to have somebody come out and they're going to measure up your kitchen for you and talk about what size appliances you have and talk about where you want things to go and they're gonna make boxes so that everything fits perfectly. Okay. You can get it made out of any material you want. Whatever species of wood Almquist has or whatever tree you cut down out of your backyard three years ago and you milled up, you can make your cabinets out of that. Most of the time, the joinery is gonna be far superior. Um, the cheaper cabinets rely on like plastic clips and glue a lot, 
whereas custom cabinets are going to rely on either traditional joinery or uh, machine joinery that's going to make a much stronger joint. But it is so much more expensive. Um, just to give you an example, and this is a few years old also, so it's more expensive now, but um, when I got an estimate on my kitchen, which is somewhat modestly sized, I was trying to get an estimate on paint grade cabinets, so out of poplar or maple, that I was going to paint, so just boxes, um, no face, uh, excuse me, no toe kicks, I was going to build all the toe kicks, and I was going to do the installation, and it was $11,000, eleven to $12,000, something like that. Um, so it's, it's very, very expensive. Pre-manufactured, on the other hand, um, you could, and then one more thing I want to say about custom cabinets. You're going to wait quite a while. For, it takes time. For those of you in cabinet making, know that it, it takes time to put these things together and build them right. Um, so you're going to be waiting quite a while for these. Um, you could drive to Home Depot today if you want, load up your rig with all the cabinets you need, and drive home and start putting them in. They're in boxes, they come in standard sizes that are usually like multiples of three inch. So you can get an 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36 inch cabinets, and you just kind of put those where they mostly fit, and then they sell these little filler strips to make up the difference, okay? So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Like if, if you're building a custom kitchen, you're measuring a wall, and it's 137 inches, and you're building cabinets and arranging them around appliances so that everything fits perfectly, okay? With the pre-manufactured cabinets, you're buying all of these boxes that are in standard sizes and you're putting them in and then oh, we got a little four inch gap over here we're gonna rip down this filler strip and nail it in and you make it work but it doesn't look very clean okay it looks kind of tacked together the material choices are going to be somewhat limited you can get as of right now last I checked you can get hickory you can get painted white or you could get this kind of awful looking pink stained light pink stained one um, so not a lot of options and I mentioned before the the joinery is pretty weak uh, glue and little plastic corner clips the carcasses are like half inch plywood versus five eighths or three quarter um, but as long as they survive transportation and installation, and then once you glue or excuse me, screw it to the wall and put some countertops on it, it's usually fine. Okay, it's just that initial like taking it out of the box, putting it together, attaching it to the wall. That's where they kind of tend to fall apart. Um, but so much, so much cheaper. But really poor quality. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, when you're when you're screwing cabinets together, uh, the face frames aren't don't plane out. They're bowed and it's not glued right, so you know they're sticking out from each other. These don't look very nice. But anyway, you could probably do your whole kitchen for under fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, right around fifteen hundred dollars to do your whole kitchen, and you can put it in yourself and you can have it done in a, a day or two versus paying you know maybe $20,000 for a nice custom kitchen or more. Obviously it's gonna vary a lot depending on the size of your kitchen, what you're wanting to get out of it, um, what materials you choose.